Hello everybody and welcome to One Player Today on the table. Newly felted, I hope you noticed. Seven Wonders. Now it's an absolute classic and I, I have to say, unfortunately, it's been sitting on my shelf of shame for some time until I did a little bit of uh, searching around, found the solo rules generated by the board game geek community, or at least one of the members of the board game geek community, and uh, and they're, they're pretty brilliant. Um, I wanted to, because, because I had never played Seven Wonders before playing the solo rules, I had to do a bit of both, right? I had to go find how to actually play regularly with other people and then follow, find some, you know, find ways to play the solo game as well. I hope to be able to combine a little bit of both of those into one video for those of you who have not played Seven Wonders multiplayer, but do wish to play it solo. Anyone who finds yourself in that position or just wants to see how the solo rules work, this video is for you. So to start in Seven Wonders, what we need to do is decide the civilization, um, out of seven conveniently, that we are going to be building or trying to develop, um, and of course the civilizations that our opponents are going to be developing. Now in the solo game we play one civilization and we play a civilization either side of us, so two AI players. The way that they take their turns is designated by kind of a flow chart, which is pretty simple to follow. It's like a priority list. Um, I'll post the link to the rules on BGG in the description. Um, but just for now, uh, well, while I'm taking a turn, I'll kind of go through each of them so you can see the, how the decisions are made for the, the, uh, the AI players. But um, like I said, we've got to choose first. So we can either just choose you know, ourselves or we can rely on these... Uh, these cards here, oops, not those ones, we can rely on these cards here to tell us or to choose for us which civilization we are going to rule over. So, I suppose left to right, he will be playing as Artemis, uh, we will be Rhodes and Zeus over there in Olympias. So, I will take Rhodes in the middle, Olympia over here and Artemis over here. You'll see there's an A and a B side. I'm going to play on the A sides. They're slightly simpler in the rules that they have on each of the uh, wonder uh, requirements. For each civilization, you're able to build a wonder, hence seven wonders. Um, and the closer you get to completing that wonder, the better benefits you get for your civilization. Um, the B side includes kind of more complicated or complex ways to get to that wonder. They get you slightly different perks, but they're, they're, they're relatively balanced, so you can play A versus B, but I'm just going to play all A's just for simplicity's sake this time. So, so let me arrange those. Very nice. And as you'll see, um, this is a bit of a table eater. It's quite a wide spread, and we're going to have a lot of cards up here and at least a few cards down here, um, our decks and our progress towards the wonders. So if things get a little confusing on screen, I'll try to maybe pile them up or something. It's always nice to see what your opponents have. It's not necessarily imperative. Um, so if I do have to pile stuff up, I, I will. But anyway, we'll get into that. Now what we're going to do is deal each player their decks. So this will be our left-handed player. This is our right-handed player, me in the middle. Um, ambidextrous, I guess. Um, and each player will get seven cards. Just like so. You should be able to see the three decks just peeking off of the, uh, up, up, up onto the camera there. So we've got seven cards in each deck. The cards that we're going to be playing are separated into three eras, one, two, and three. For the first era, these brown cards, the right-handed player will take the turn first, then it'll be me, then the left-handed player. In the next era, that will swap and go the other way. That's just to kind of keep it a little bit balanced um, in terms of like who gets to play a card first and who gets to take advantage of the resources first. But yeah, let's 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 just go. To start with, the thing that happens in the solo game that does not happen in the regular game is to take the top card of each deck and add it to our deck. That is to replicate the passing of the decks around, which is what happens in the uh, multiplayer game. There's a kind of a drafting mechanism where you choose the card you want and then pass it on. Obviously, we can't choose for the AI because we just choose what's beneficial for ourselves. So they pass us two cards just to kind of uh, give that randomness to it as well. So for the first turn, the right-hand player will go first, as we said, it's era one, and they're going to look at their cards and, check, and, and look through the priority list as to what they're going to play. So number one is a resource that costs one coin. These resource cards are, as you, meant, as you see, different colors for different types of resource. 
Um, so these are uh, blue cards, like civil uh, civilian cards, so things that make your civilians happy, like baths and theatres. These just gain you victory points immediately. The green cards are technology. The grey cards are um, like artisan goods. The brown cards are all resources, and the yellow cards are like trading cards. So, the first on the priority list is a resource costing one coin. This is the cost up top. We don't have any cards that cost one coin here, so then we move on to the next one. Then the second one is the yellow cards, and so their priority is to play a trading card, and we'll put it down uh, right there. Very good. This deck now does get passed to me. So this comes here for my next turn, and I get to play from my hand, which is obviously nine cards uh, because of the two added to it. And we can obviously choose, we don't have to, we're not subject to the AI priority list, so we can choose whatever the heck we want to play. Now, we're keeping an eye on the things we need to complete the wonder. So for the, for the first stage of our wonder, we need two wood. For the third stage, in order to gain us two military points, we're going to gain three brick, or we need to get three brick. And for the, to complete our wonder, the Colossus, um, we're going to need four ore. Now, we already produce one ore automatically. The Barrett costs one ore to, to play, so we can do that. It would also gain us a military point here, which is scored at the end of every round. So it's scored at the end of every era. We could also start building bricks with our clay pool here. We could start building glass with this artisan glassworks. Oh, I should have given everybody three coins. Just rewind the video and pretend that I did that. There we go, these have been there all along. Um, you saw nothing. So we, we would be able to make this clay pit, for example, um, which would actually get us a brick or an ore, and I think that's actually a decent shout. So I'm going to place this here. I'm going to try and keep the names visible on the cards. Um, one, because you're not allowed to play duplicate cards um, for each civilization, and two, because it's just nice to see what we've got. Um, so I'm going to pay one into the bank over there, and now we can either generate on any turn two ore or one brick. So I pass my deck to the left-handed player, and the left-handed player takes their turn, again, based on the priority list. Well, they do um, have a resource costing one coin, so they are going to build the timber yard, and hopefully that might be just on camera. Okay, I'm going to keep it like right there. So now Thesos can build uh, or can produce one papyrus, one stone, or one wood. This deck goes over to the right-hand player, and that's the end of the first round. So we've each built one thing. The uh, Myself and the left-handed player have built ourselves a resource. The right-hand player has built themselves a trading post. What does this do? In any turn, we are able to trade with our neighbours. So we're all neighbours pretty... M we're all actual neighbours. This neighbour is to my right, this neighbour is to my left. I'm to this neighbour's right, and this... <laughs> this neighbor is to this neighbor's left. Okay, that was the worst way of explaining that, but we're all sitting in a circle. So <laughs> what this marketplace allows um, Olympia to do is to pay one to either of us to either get one glass, one linen, or one papyrus. Now, usually it would cost him two, and so he gets a bit of a discount for having that marketplace. We can only buy um, what the neighbor next to us produces. So for example, he cannot buy a linen from me because I don't have any linen yet. He can't buy a glass because I don't produce glass either. He can buy ore or brick because that's what I produce. And he can buy papyrus from this neighbor over here, Ephesos. So usually it would cost him two. Now it costs him one. Fantastic. It's the end of the round. We're going to do the same exact thing again. And we're going to give the top two or the top card from each of my opponents to me. So they've got decks of five each, I think, now. And we are ready to go. The right-hand player is going to take his turn. Oh, yeah, he's only got four cards, that's right. And so a resource card costing one coin is not going to happen. There's no yellow cards. Other resource cards, there's none of those either. So then next, from this point, we choose cards which involve paying the human player the least amount in coins. So if, any, if ever he can avoid paying us anything to get one of the resources that he needs to, buy, to build these, he will try to. So what that looks like is, can he build a science card? Well, no, he can't. No one yet is producing linen. And even though he can buy it for cheap, he can't buy it from anyone because we're still in the, you're still in the early stages of civilization at the moment. So this one's null. He can, however, build a military card, and this is where this human player 
least coins rule might come into place. The military card is next on the list. Now, I'm producing brick, so he could buy brick from me. However, he's producing wood, so he's going to use this one. He's going to use the wood that he produces and build the stockade and gain one military point um, at the end of the era. At the end of the era, we all compare our military might. The person who wins, depending on the round, or depending on the era, sorry, um, will get this lovely plus three token. And the person who loses in the fight against their neighbor gets negative points and will talk about it when it happens. So we've moved his deck to my uh, my pile here and we are gonna, we've got a decent selection, haven't we? It's an, We've got another ore, so we could start getting very ore rich. I don't know if I necessarily want to just yet. I mean, it's quite far off for us to be able to, 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 uh, to, to build our third stage of the wonder. It's very forward thinking. We could build these, and no, we couldn't build the baths. We could build this theater, um, which allows us, in this bottom right hand here, you can see it allows us to build the statue um, in the next era for free, which would get us four victory points. Sometimes worth doing that, thinking ahead, but mm, sometimes not. Um, my other option is to build a stone pit. I can buy stone from my neighbor over here because he's producing it, um, but that's a decent option. Or this one here would allow me to buy this gentleman's wood, which I do need to start my, uh, to build my second wonder stage. It allows me to buy this gentleman's wood for only one. I think I will do that. Um, so we'll place the marketplace here and we've got ourselves the east, or sorry, the east trading post um, right here. Note that his uh, allows him to trade with, trade with both of his neighbors, me, only my easterly neighbor, if you will. This deck goes to my left, and the left-hand player will start again subject to the priority list. So there's no resources to build costing one. He can, however, play any of these other resource cards with which he is very rich. Um, let's put these over here because he's definitely going to play one of these. Well, it, it's okay, it says, if there's ever a choice after using the priority list, choose the card which benefits you the most. So I suppose... Hmm, what would we benefit from? Brick, maybe? Glass? No, not really glass. That would probably benefit this person. Um, Lumberyard, more wood? No, we're probably, we're probably okay on wood. Um, brick for our second wonder stage. We're already producing one. We could have him produce our second. Yeah, let's do this. I don't know. So he's got a clay pit. Um, the rest will join over here, and that's the end of round two. So we've each got two cards. Again, we do the thing. We place the top two cards onto my hand. So I've got a hand of one, two, three, four, five, and everybody else should have a hand of something similar. Five and maybe five. Yeah, look at that. It all works out. This confused me for a while, how it, <laughs> like, honestly, how this continued to work and stay fair, but apparently it does, so there you go. Right-hand player will start and again there's no resources costing a coin so he's going to be able to choose from these two the lumber yard and the glass works what benefits me the most well i suppose it's somewhat beneficial to have him produce glass just in case i need it um but then again making him just a, a wood merchant wouldn't be the worst thing in the world it kind of like lessens his choices you know i suppose i don't know we'll see these are going over to me for next round. And ooh, that guard tower is looking pretty spicy, like that. The papyrus again. Um, we can't build the baths, remember. This altar allows us to build the temple for free in the next round, so that's pretty cool. We don't have a way of getting our hands on linen yet, so this card is still useless. It, it gives us two options for next turn, though. It's a very handy card. It gives us the stables and the dispensary for free. Um, I realise I'm showing that to you upside down, sorry. Um, stables and dispensary for free in the next era. If I can get my hands on some linen, I maybe you actually should probably do that. I think I had it last turn, so we'll be coming right back around again. For now, let's build the guard tower. This gentleman's got one military might. If we have one military might, we're not going to lose the fight to him. And if we can win the fight on the Fesos if they don't get any military might, eh, you know, why not? So, we'll give our left-hand brethren those cards and for him ah, see there's the loom does it benefit us to have them build the loom or not 
if they build the loom now, then they'll most likely try to build that uh, technology card at, uh, next turn. So I think I'm actually going to not have them build this, which is terrible. It feels terrible to do that, but that's the that's the way it goes. Um, so these two are going to go over here because he's going to choose a resource for sure. Um, I wouldn't mind giving him ore, um, although I can't trade with him for ore, or at least I can't trade with him cheaply for ore. I'm producing two. I need four for my final wonder. Um, he's already producing stone, so maybe we could just duplicate that. Yeah, let's do ore. I'm the more the more ore. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna send myself into tongue twister. The more ore that he can produce, the better for us. Or the more ore that's on the table, I should say, the better for us in the end game. Trying to get that seven victory points. This isn't necessarily the best way to win. Um, I'll just put that out there. And you don't need to build the seven wonders at all. You can just concentrate on the cards in front of you that you're building to add to your, uh, you know, add to your strategy, if you will. But they are helpful, and it's kind of nice. I mean, it's it's the name of the game. You've got to build a wonder. I'm not. I can't be Rhodes if I'm not building this giant buff dude at the front of our harbor. Surely not. Next round, yes. Next round, indeed. Um, let's see what the right hand player's got to. I got to work with here. Again, we're going priority list. So it's a resource card costing one coin, which again hasn't come up. So he's going to build one of these two, and I suppose. Again, I kind of want to build that loom, so um, I think I'm going to save it for myself, to be honest. Yeah, I'm going to. He's going to build a stone pit, because, hey, that's what the rules say. Um, so this goes here. These are mine for this round. And, ooh, okay, another, we could build a barracks. Hmm. I'm tempted by these technology points. I would have to pay my neighbor in a Fesos my last two coins in order to build or in order to buy his papyrus to build this scriptorium, but it allows me to build the courthouse and the library for free. At the end of the game, these technology points are scored, and when you get sets of the same symbol and uh, almost like rows or sets of all three differing symbols. So the more you can get the same, the better, or if you can get full sets, that's great too. I could build this west trading post and, and really just up my, my trading capacity. Or I could focus on my barracks and or my military might, get another get another military point to shore up those. I mean at the end of the first era, it's only the token that you uh, the points you get are three. And then at the end of the second era you get a three for winning a battle, and then at the end of the third era you get a five. So it's not a massive amount of points, to be honest. I mean, it's a maximum of six, which isn't nothing. I don't know, six per era, I should say. Um, which isn't nothing. Yeah, let's... Do, I'm going to do it. I, this is a bit of a risk, and I'm not sure that it's going to pay off. But I'm going to concentrate on tech for a little bit, or at least for, for right now, and, uh, and see how that goes. Our left-handed friend is going to... I definitely, I definitely did just say I was going to build the loom, didn't I? Oh no, wait, the loom is coming to me. Yes, the loom is in my next round. Yes, got it, got it, got it. Um, so still, he cannot build the Apocathery. Um, so, in fact, the only card that he will build in this round is the Press. In which case, he's doubling up on his Papyrus, and you know what? That's fine. Next round, and we are good to go. And so the, our opponents are only dealing with are dealing with two card, a two-card choice. And unfortunately for this person, again, they cannot build this because no one has linen yet. So they were going to have to go with the altar, and they're going to gain themselves a victory point for doing so, or two victory points, I should say. I'm going to place this slightly off camera. It's not, it's not really necessary for us to see. So this comes to me, and in that case, I know what I'm going to build because this loom will allow me to build this apothecary. Um, on my next turn, and I think that is the way to go. Unless there's something else really good, which there isn't. Yeah, loom it is. Loom it up. And they can build either the barracks or the glassworks, and they will, in fact, build the glassworks. Wow, they're really concentrating on resources, aren't they? So, again, resource card costing a point, then a yellow card, then another resource card, any other resource card. So they have to build that before they choose military. So this is the last card for them to play. So, oh. So they can actually, they're going to have to give me two coins 
but they can buy my ore and then they've got two military strength. So look at them, they've actually gone and done it. And they're gonna beat me at the end of the era when it comes to military might. So we're gonna build this apothecary. So now we have this, uh, this wonderful engineering symbol, um, some, some script, some language, I suppose. We're gonna pass this to here and we're gonna pass this to here. They are going to build, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, they'll build the science card. So this is actually the first non-resource card they can, they've actually built. So they're going to build the science card. This is going to go here. We've got one card left each, and that is the end of the era. So era one is over. So let me do a little review of the board. Um, I'll show you kind of who's in what position. We'll do our military. And then I think what I'm going to do is split this up into three parts. I know that sometimes part videos... Um, or it can be a little frustrating or a little, I don't know, they don't seem to do that well, but people kind of lose interest as we go along. But there's plenty more to see in Era 2 and 3, but I don't want to make some like hour and a half long epic. So I'm going to split these up into 1, 2, 3, Era 1, Era 2, Era 3. Um, but for now, let's see who's where, what, what's happening, what's good, and uh, yeah, there you go. So in terms of the military might let's tip out my military cup we're going to test each um each civilization against its neighbor as i said so the first era we've got one point up for grabs again the second era will have three points up for grabs and the third era will have five points up for grabs if we are victorious and then the losing side of the battle will get a negative one token so um, I suppose let's go right to left, because that's how we played the era. So the right-hand player has indeed beaten both of his neighbours. So one on this side, me, and one on this side, uh, him. Both uh, are beaten. He's got more military might than us. And so he gains one point for each. I gain one negative token, and so does Ephesos. For me, I beat Ephesos. So I get one, and they get negative one, and then this person, they've already battled. So we don't give them negative one on top of one another. We just, as long as one per, as long as each person fights each other once, yes, that's how it goes. And so, on the board right now, Ephesos, heavy on resources. They, they can produce quite a lot and quite a variety of things. Um, they, they can produce two papyrus per turn, which is pretty helpful. We can produce two ore per turn, a brick and a fabric. We can do a little bit of trading. We've started off our military might. It's not great. Obviously, we just got beat by these guys. And then this fellow here, he's got two victory points, don't forget, sitting on the edge of the table. He's kind of somewhat limited in his resources, only wood and stone right now, but he can trade for the more fanciful resources. So he could get his hands on my linen um, and a Fesos's papyrus and glass. He's going on the military track as well, but no technology yet, so he might be limited in that scoring at the end of the game. I think I will leave it here. Um, I hope that I've done a decent enough job explaining on what we're trying to do and hopefully what we're, uh, what we're aiming for in this game. Um, obviously, we're looking to score as many victory points as we can, and we do that through the cards we play. So Era 2 is going to be where we start building... Here, I'll just show you. Era 2 is going to be where we start building kind of the larger, either civilian structures. We're going to start being able to gain and produce more and more resources. And we're going to have um, more and more complex needs for our buildings. So, for example, you see this, this dispensary, unless we have <laughs> the apothecary, it will cost us one glass and two ore. So it's a quite a large, um, you know, quite a large need or cost to build these, these Era 2. And again, obviously, as you imagine... Era 3 gets even more spendy. Um, there's a couple other things where you can gain coins here. We might have a few uh, victory points. Yeah, here we are, all at the top, strangely enough. So statues, temples, etc. So plenty more building to be done. And uh, I do hope you'll join me in part two, where we enter the second era of our civilization and see who comes out on top. That will be it for me. Um, I do hope you've enjoyed this. Um, I think this is a great little set of solo rules, and I'm, I'm, I'm happy to have found them, because this game was on my to-trade list for a long time, just because I thought I'm never going to get it to the table. And yet, here we are, and uh, I'm having a grand old time with it. That is going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching, and uh, keep your eyes peeled, hit the subscribe button, and then you'll get told with that little bell when part two comes out. So, there you go.
Thanks so much for watching and I will see you later.